here we are coming back to finding the truth of Mike Hideous where it's still Christmas, isn't it? Feels like Christmas. Oh, At least God. there's still a lot of lights around out there, right? Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> right. It won't be around for long. The good thing is we're, the days are going to start getting longer. We're already past the, the winter solstice, and now the days are going to start getting longer. So I'm, I'm all about that. Yeah, exactly. I agree with that. So it is nice to see that our daylight time is expanding. So uh, as we're back for our second segment here, uh, you know, we, we talked about in the first segment about world and how, you know, gloomy it's looking, obviously, with, with things, you know, these other countries, essentially, you know, flying around and uh, whatever, bothering us. But regardless, we're back here at home uh, in the United States. So, you know, Mike, what are your concerns when it comes to at least uh, getting through the next year from uh, the U.S. perspective? Wow. Uh, well, um, so some people laugh at me when I, I talk about this topic because I have been doing my best to prepare and prep, if you will, for the possibility of a dangerous year. 2024, again, as I mentioned before, is in my opinion going to be a dangerous year. And so I have been preparing for what could possibly be a bad time. And I swear, folks... I sincerely hope I'm wrong. I well, hope I am wrong. You know, really honestly, do. to give you some credit there, Mike, you know, it's worthwhile prepping because there are all sorts of scenarios that could put us in a situation where we're suddenly trying to get our most basic resources. That's correct. So, uh, you know, I went through Hurricane Sandy where I went through seven days of having no electricity. And that is a whole new world when you have to actually deal with living day to day and you don't have any electricity to provide warmth, water, you know, basic resources to your family of four. I mean, that's what I had at the time. So, you know, it was a real concern. Mm -hmm. So to your point, you know, like being prepared is not, I don't think it should be something that's laughed at or, or, or you know, thought Oh, I agree. Lightly. Yeah, I agree. It's, but it's, it's a realistic there are, perspective. There are people who see it as being, uh, you know, being a worry wart and, and, being overly concerned about things that you shouldn't near, n n worry about because the government will take care of you. Well, that's bullshit because the fucking police can't even take care of us these days, okay? They got their hands full, and in most cases, their hands are tied when it comes to a situation. So you got to take care of yourself. And I and try sadly, to. We, and sadly, we can look towards Maui just to make that a, that of exact course. point right now. We don't of need course. to go down that rabbit hole. But That's damn, right. that was a major failure of of you know our our Epic first responders. You know, and and a, a seedy one at that. Uh, but to answer your question, basically, um, so here's what I think is is happening in the U.S. I I I believe, based on my studies and 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 the connections that I have. I believe that there is a possibility that we're going to find food shortages. Um, we, uh, in fact, uh, if I may just bring just internationally for a moment, uh, there are two countries now. Where are they? There are two countries that are now uh, eliminating the export of rice. I believe one of them is in. Uh, here we go. India. India has banned the export of rice. So has China, because these countries know something big is going to happen. So they have stopped with the export of their main grain to feed their people. And and that is a, a serious like red flag like oh hello something's something's going on here. Uh so there's that. Walmart is selling bullion gold. Kill 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 kilograms. Kil 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 thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Kilogram bullion gold. That's little little uh, bars of gold. Sure. Walmart is and not jewelry, gold, bullion. Mm -hmm. and well, just to point out, actually, uh, Costco was doing the same thing. Right. They, so, they were, but here's the thing. You don't want to buy and, from and these people. Bars. I'll tell you why. Because if you buy from these people, there's a possibility the government may track it down and know that you have it. If in the event they wanted to take it back, they could well, technically take it back. I'm not sure what that term is, but well, technically, to the, to your point, is the fact that they're actually tracking all of our, you know, uh, digital transactions. So yes, they will easily be able to know when you purchase something like that, and you know, be able to possibly react on it. Right. So let's hope it doesn't get to that point. But 
So yeah, that's what's happening. Uh, that's what's happening abroad. You've got um, oh, uh, fish antibiotics have now been banned in the USA. Now, for anybody who now, what's is, the the concern with that? Necessarily? That's what I was just going about to tell you. I was just about to tell you. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't mean Ant- to step on you. Antibiotics um, that are used in fish tanks, tropical fish tanks, like uh, you know, you've had fish, right? Sure. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, I've had fish as well, and sometimes if they get an infection, like what's like called ick, ick, ick or, or any other type of bacterial infections, you get an antibiotic, you put it in the water, makes the fish better. Now, that same antibiotic can be used for people. However, they have now banned the sale of fish antibiotics. You can no longer buy them, which means you can't buy them for yourself if you needed to, if, let's say you're stocking up on supplies and you want to have medication and antibiotics in your uh, first aid kit, you can't and, do and that. And what's anymore. the logic behind that? I mean, if you get sick, you have antibiotics. I know that, but why would they ban it? I don't know. That I don't uh-huh. know. Just like I don't know why, uh, for example, I don't know why they would uh, stop the sale of and the export of rice or why they would sell gold. At, uh, at Walmart. These are things that all these things are, are sort of like a little little hints about what's happening. Definitely. And little as signs. I said earlier, there, there's a big, in my opinion, a catastrophic event is going to happen. And again, I swear I hope I'm wrong. I really do. I have never wanted to be more wrong in my life. But if something happens, all these little things that are popping up, are little signs. Remember when we talked about that movie last week, uh, Leave the World Behind? Yeah, exactly. I don't know if you saw it, but in that film I mentioned that there were a lot of little things that they brought up that made sense to me. Again, based on a book. The movie is based on a book. But it really made sense to me and it resonated. And so when I saw that, I'm like, wow, I, I thought the same thing. So here we are. We've got uh, situations like, uh, uh, as I said, the, you, you can't buy antibiotics anymore for, for fish. <laughs> uh, food prices are going to continue to go higher. The possibility well, of there being yeah. a food shortage because we can't get supplies. Uh, if I remember correctly, and I could be wrong, don't quote me on this. If I remember correctly, America used to get a lot of its fertilizing uh, supplies from either Russia and or China. If that ceases to happen crops in America might be a a difficult thing to get not only because they can't grow them but the possibility of transporting them if gas is going to shoot up higher and and inflation is going to keep going higher you've got all these things it's like a domino effect you know what I'm saying definitely and and, and in perspective towards the farmers is persistent you know Based on what you were just saying, you know, they already have a tough problem because of the green agenda. So the fertilizer you're talking about is most likely going to just get banned based on green agenda regulations Probably. because of whatever X, Y or Z, you know, reasons they want to list. Uh, you know, the way their regulations are going through the roof right now, it's it's just ridiculous from gas stoves to refrigerators, you name it. Like, you know, they're looking to restrict our, our ability to purchase reasonably priced you know devices. So, you know, uh, there, there's definitely a threat to our our uh, uh, agriculture and through farmers. And um, it's, it's it's to be taken seriously. I mean, and, you okay. know, the, the threat to, you know, fuel and furthering your point. And, and one of the things about, you know, prices going up and, and the shortages at the store. I mean, we've been seeing that ever since COVID, quite honestly. Mm-hmm. But the worst thing is the fact that, you know, the, the fact that we have an administration that currently is not focused on lowering fuel costs as much as possible and the best way to do that would be able to produce domestically and not import our oil this is just basic economics and math and the fact that this is being blatantly ignored and and things are getting more expensive in the way of fuel is going to cost make everything else go up in costs so if if this administration wanted to make our lives better it would try to make energy as cheap as possible so that way we would be able to get everything more cheaply than we are now and the, the reality is we're probably not going to go back to what we were before but 
you know, it was only three years ago where we had literally gas prices, what, like, you know, two bucks a gallon? Something yep. like that, you know, maybe 250 depending on where you were, but damn, <laughs> that makes a huge difference. Sure you does. know, you know, so to your point, yeah, you know, you're going to see more inflation. You're going to see food shortages. I'm tired of going to the store and, and looking for a product that I like and like, oh, shit, they're all out damn i'll have to wait till maybe next week they've got it I'm like you know well it's only going to get worse it's only going to get worse because th and, and and now that this is an election an election year things are going to get out of hand the our enemies are going to take advantage more advantage of us than they already have and uh with this weak failing administration they're not going to do anything they don't care they don't fucking care people okay if you're a democrat out there and you're listening you need to wake up because your party doesn't give two shits about what you think or you want to do. It's all about the party. And if you're standing up for that, you've got a problem. Because if you really think government is going to do you a favor, you need to wake up. And I don't mean to woke up. I mean to wake up. Because it's going to just get worse. Amen. There's no way anybody out there, whether you're Democrat or Republican, there's nobody out there that can that can stand there and tell me that we were under we are, that we are currently under a better situation than when Donald Trump was running this country. There's no way, because if you really want to get serious about it, let's check the facts. The stocks were high, jobs were high. Were, you know, people were getting jobs. People were working. Things were going well, and now. The complete opposite has happened, and in three years, this country has literally gone down the toilet. So don't don't yeah. anybody out there tell me that Trump didn't do a good job. You may hate the guy, and I don't give a flying flip if you hate the guy. But let's call a spade a spade. Let's let's check the facts. He did better than any president before him up until Reagan. In fact, I think he did a better job than Reagan. Mind you, I was yep. a little kid. I was 13 mm -hmm. when, he, when he took office. But nevertheless, when I look back now and read about Reagan, Bush, Clinton, Bush again, Ding, Ding, Dingleberry had Obama. When I look at all the things that they did, nobody beat Trump. And again, you can hate him all you want, but he did things that helped this country. And if you don't think this country is worth it, first of all, you shouldn't be listening to this show. In fact, get off. Don't even listen to this show. If you don't think Donald Trump did a good job and you think President Corpse is doing a good job, don't listen to this show because you're not going to like what we have to say. I am not politically correct. And as far as I know, my partner Z is not politically correct either. <laughs> and I don't no, apologize for it. No, I don't apologize I don't for either. it. Well, especially since political correctness was something that came out of Marxism, from what I understand. So I definitely have no interest in that. And since freedom of speech is supposed to be the rule of the land, that is where the show resides. We are free to speak our minds. And, uh, and we let our listeners judge based on that. Right. We hope to hear from you in the comments below, you know, your thoughts on all the things that Mike has brought up. But it's... Uh, it's an important uh, part of our society that we have freedom of speech, and, um, and you know, this you know, show you is know, dedicated Z, to that. You know, Z, the, the question stands is, can we survive this current situation this, this, in our country uh, as it is, uh, i.e., lack of military? Do you know that there are less people want to join the military now? because they're teaching critical race theory and gender sensitivity instead of teaching you how to kill your fucking opponent. Hey folks, thanks for listening to Finding the Truth with Mike Hideous. Listen, don't forget to check out all my Hideous merchandise, including t-shirts, blankets, hoodies, CDs, and my book, King of an Empire to the Shoes of the Misfit. It's all available only at MikeHideous.com. And don't forget, that's Mike with a Y, M-Y-K-E, MikeHideous.com.